I think we're ready to rock. Whew, man. What's up, Yappa fam, and welcome to today's TOTD. A Yappa fam. This boy's bug Raha has a little bug itching and scratching all the way down there. I visited my little sister over the weekend, had her in my arms, and she had a cold. And that cold leapt out from her and attached itself to me. So it's been warm lemonade to battle it. And if it gets a little too out of hand, we're gonna have to call in the vitamin C pills. Yeah. And make that happen. But anyway, Yappa fam, if I, <coughs> excuse me, if I cough a little during the TOTD, it's because that itchy scratchiness in my voice. Anyway, so today I felt to talk about confidence. <laughs> Confidence, 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 and how we can have more confidence as young apostolics because we live a very natural life. We are spirit beings living in these natural human bodies. And there could be times where we lack confidence in situations where we actually would need greater amounts of confidence than what we have at that moment. Now you have the spiritual side of things, confidence in the spirit, and you have the natural side of things, confidence in the natural. Now in the spirit, you have to be like a pit bull bulldog this is the mountain I'm gonna die on. If anybody needs to die, it's gonna happen right here. Type doggedness, confidence to say that I will win no matter what. No matter what comes against me, no matter what tries to attack me or what tries to tear me down, I will stand as an apostolic and I will be here on this mount called Jesus Name Baptism, infilling of the Holy Ghost, evidence by speaking in other tongues, the oneness of God, the doctrine of the Word of God. I will stand on here and I will fight here. I'm gonna stand for my family, I'm gonna stand for my friends, I'm gonna stand for my loved one, I'm gonna stand for my church, I'm gonna stand for my God. And you gotta have that fighter type confidence to war in the spirit. And now, let's take a look at the natural. Confidence in the natural is something that is very easy to cultivate. <laughs> I'm just joking. It can be very difficult to cultivate confidence in the natural. It depends on which angle you're looking at it and other factors that we're gonna talk about on today's CSV. And there's really only three ways to build confidence. First is what I call self-encouragement, okay? It's kind of like self-talk. It's kind of like pumping yourself up to go do something. Second is by knowledge acquisition, acquiring know-how of a skill set, a demographic of really whatever, just acquiring knowledge. And the last one, the very last one, the most critical one that will build your confidence exponentially just like that, I'll save to the end of this video. So, let's talk about the first on the list, and that is self-encouragement. So self-encouragement kind of breaks down like this. You have... Okay, that person has a horn and they're not afraid to use it. It breaks down like this. And this self-encouragement looks something like this, right? You're a guy, you're at a conference, and you see just amazingness, godly, Holy Ghost-filled, just attractive womanness right over there. You wanna go say what's up, you wanna go talk to her, but when you looked at her, oh my goodness, your knees start buckling, your heart starts going like, you're just enamored by her. And then your bros behind you, they bump you like, hey man, go talk to her. And then it just all like falls apart. Your palms start getting sweaty, your Throat starts welling up like this. You begin to break out into cold sweat and you're like, how is this gonna work? So then, in order to kind of pump yourself up, give yourself a little boost of confidence, you begin to talk to yourself. Oh bro, you got this man, dude. You're the man, you got this. Don't worry about it, you're gonna talk to her and make it. Cause man, you the man, dude. You can do it, you are the man. You are the man. So that number starts happening. And it gives you kind of a little squirt of confidence. Where then you walk up to her, stick your hand out, and say, hello, my name is, and say your name here. And this self-encouragement works in other scenarios as well. Whether it's like a job setting, whether you're gonna go minister somewhere, really wherever, you can encourage yourself in whatever activity that you're looking to engage. Now on a scale of one through 10 for confidence boosting, I'd give it maybe like a two. It's a real quick little spurt that can easily dissipate just as quickly as it came. After you get through the introductions with this new lady friend of yours, the conversation begins to plummet. Ah! What do you do? And then that self-encouragement vanishes away. 
At number two on the list, knowledge acquisition, which has to be probably the most powerful, close to the most powerful of the three on the list. Knowledge acquisition. What do you mean by that, Abel? Very simply, you go out, you study a subject, and now you have the confidence that understanding that subject gives you. So for example, you're about to take this massive, wild, crazy exam, and you're not really confident if you're gonna pass it or not. So you acquire knowledge through study so that you can gain the confidence to end up passing it. People call this the competence confidence loop, where you acquire knowledge, competence, and it builds confidence. So your knowledge on a certain subject will ultimately bring confidence for you. So let's go back to the example of the dude trying to talk to the girl. Let's say the guy had been studying small talk, studying how to keep a conversation going, the tricks of the trade in regards to conversing with another person. So the guy sees a super Holy Ghost filled long hair, long skirt young lady, arrests his attention. His homies come up behind him, bump him on the shoulder. Hey bro, go talk to her, man. And because he's confident in his competence regarding conversation and regarding engaging with people, how to keep a conversation going and not make it awkward. He's practiced it, he's studied it, he's mastered it. He can then go into the conversation and instead of coming up and awkwardly saying, hi, my name's John. <laughs> He can go up to her and approach her, not that awkwardly. So now fellas, get your notepad out. You may need this one. Ladies, go to get your notes out because he may try to use this on you. So the guy, let's say his name's John. He knows that sometimes girls don't really like it if they're approached abruptly. If he just walks up to her and sticks his hand in her face and says, my name is John, you're beautiful, let's talk. That could be way too abrupt for it. So what does John do? Because of his competence, it could then give him confidence to open up in another way. He starts working the friends, starts talking to who she talks to, gets around and begins to engage in conversation with her. Not getting her name just yet, he's smart. He's waiting for a conversation to arise and he's looking for a light situation that can mirror her situation so that a conversation can spark between both of them. For example, they're in a group and she's talking about how her cat got run over by her dad while he's pulling out of the garage one morning. Well, John's gonna start filing through his mental cabinet saying cats, dad, driveway, car, are. What stories do I have that correlate with those things that I can interject and shoot in her direction? Wow, that is crazy. Were you close to the cat? Like, was it your kitten or was it like a stray? Boom, instantly John shoots a question into her corner. Now she has to respond. So she says, oh no, it's just a random stray. But it left this big old splatter on our driveway. And then John picks up on that and he spins off of that. He's thinking driveway, he's thinking splatter, he's thinking dead cat. So he pulls back into his filing cat but it finds a similar light situation and then conversation flows. But it happened because of John's competence that gave him confidence that ultimately got him her number. <laughs> No, but seriously, if you want to know how to make friends, if you want to know how to pass your exit exams, whatever you want to do, cultivate competence, knowledge in that skill set, and it'll give you confidence in the field that you need the confidence in. Now, number three on the list, that is the super secret number one confidence builder that you could possess is one of the most popular slogans on any t-shirt, any sneaker that are about fitness, and that is just do it. Just do what you're needing confidence confidence in trial and error. What do you mean, Aviel? It breaks down like this. If you do not know anything about, let's say, construction, you know zero about it, but you found out, if this is possible, that they paid like 130 a year and you wanted the job, you prayed about it, you felt it was the will of God to take that opportunity, but you weren't confident in anything construction. Well then, what you do is you would then, in order to gain confidence within that area super, super, super quickly, you'll just just jump in and learn while you're going. Yes, you're gonna make mistakes. Yes, you're gonna fail miserably. Yes, you're gonna look very ignorant, dumb, and unlearned. But if you can lay your pride aside and jump into learning a skill set like that, you will then learn probably the quickest than anything else that we've mentioned thus far. With the confidence, confidence loop, it's safer. It's not as scary. But you don't gain that confidence very quickly because you gotta study it and then go out and apply it. Now, with just do it, you jump in and wing it the entire time and learn firsthand what works and what doesn't work. 
So let's go back to John. John sees Holy Ghost fire godliness standing over there and he wants to talk to her. So what does John do? He walks up to her, sticks his hand in her face and says, my name's John, you're pretty, let's talk. Well, she can completely shut him down, shut him out and shut him off for coming at her that abruptly. Yes, he could really get shut down from that. Now, disclaimer, I'm not advocating for you guys to just go out there and do that. To a sister in the Lord, that's not what I'm advocating. I'm using this as an example that has been used in the other points to kind of drill this in. We don't want to do that. We want to be respectful, because I promise you, that's going to take you farther than sticking your hand in someone's face. Now, so John has learned that he can't just be going, sticking his hand in sister's faces and trying to make things work from there. No, 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 that's not going to work. So what does John do? He learns from his mistakes, makes the correct adjustments by very simply just doing it just getting out there engaging it and finding out what works and what doesn't work that idea will give you confidence like nobody's business why because you went out there fumbled around doing it learned the ropes and now you know which ropes are solid and which ropes is gonna slip out your hand and fall down to the ground that you can't rely on you found that out so you know which one is the right way to go and which one is not the right way to go so now my suggestions. First, I suggest you couple knowledge acquisition with just do it and use a little bit of that self-encouragement when you need it. So let's say you're going into sales career, the wild, wild west of entrepreneurship, right? You're going in there, you got a cold call, you got to knock doors to sell things. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. scary right but if you begin to acquire knowledge surrounding what works and what doesn't in the sales industry you'll be more prepared when you're out there engaging with other human beings so that's the knowledge acquisition and then you take the just do it principle and then you go out there and learn what works for you what's your style what's your flow how does it work for you okay that's a natural example take it into the church Bible studies you find out what works for other people find out how to teach a Bible study the knowledge acquisition and then you get out there and just do it. You put your feet on the pavement, start knocking doors, start teaching them Bible studies. Learn how to do it effectively. Learn how to do it with the most impact and the greatest result. And there is absolutely no reason in the world for you not to be able to get your hands on material that works. The method has been tried, proven, and tested and is foundational throughout so many online or offline resources that we as apostolics can get a hold of at the click of a button. So the yeah, fam, a more legit natural life orientated TOTD. Hopefully this helps someone. Hopefully this will boost your confidence to a level where you're able to step into any arena and begin to see positive results within any space that you really put your hands to and are diligent in engaging. You can also take these principles, shake off all the natural of them, wipe them clean, take the basic understandings and bring them into your spiritual life. You have the word of God teaching you how to pray, how to fast, knowledge acquisition, and then you just do it. Start praying and fasting. There's literature out there from great men of God that you can take knowledge acquisition and begin to apply to your life. Just do it. So anyway, Apple fam, just wanted to give you guys that for today's COTD. Sorry this is out so late. I'm recording this way later than I had planned. So I apologize about that. Yappa fam, I love you guys. Be yapostolic above all, above all, be apostolic. And I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's TOTD. Oh man. Uh oh yeah, but fam, I'm really starting to feel the weight of this <clears throat> cold. Pray for me that it doesn't take me out for a couple days.